first of all, uh, you know, you've gone from training every day for several hours to staying home, still trying to stay in shape. What are you doing to exercise and get your work in? Uh, it's a bit difficult right now, Paul, but because obviously as much as we're trying to uh, stay fit, it's just not the same fitness as on the field. So uh, I'm lucky because my wife last year purchased a Peloton treadmill, so I've been able to, to work out on that. I have a pull-up bar at home as well. So I'm doing all those things, and then at the same time, our, uh, our uh, strength conditioning coach uh, is sending out projects for us uh, and all, uh, things that we're supposed to do. Uh, so we're kind of following that and trying to stay in shape as much as possible. But like I said, it's, it's just not the same thing as if you're on the pitch. Um, obviously, the, 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 the sport-specific and then the position-specific uh, uh, fitness, it, it, you're going to have to wait until you get back on the pitch to really get, get working on that again. How about as far as the take-home kits that Brian Schmetzer said you guys have? Do you did he you know what does that include? Uh, it's simple things like a, a foam roll, uh, a bar, um, a, a medicine ball, um, simple things like that. But uh, I already have dumbbells at home. Uh, but but yeah, you you try to have to get a little creative. I also started uh, doing silly things like putting the treadmill on really high incline while carrying the medicine ball, while having my uh, uh, oxygen deprivation mask on. So to really start to get a burn going. Uh, so I got to get creative during these, uh, these strange times right now. <laughs> Man, I've seen those masks. That, that, uh, that really puts an extra strain on you, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. And the brutal thing is on, on, the, on the Peloton, the treadmill, when you look at the scoreboard, uh, it's obviously not taken into consideration that I'm wearing uh, an oxygen deprivation mask and everybody else is flying ahead and I'm trying to keep keep up with them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, listen, my wife has become kind of a production assistant for me at home because we're doing all these broadcasts from the den in the backyard. Awesome. And I'm wondering, uh, you know, how much does Jennifer help you in all your training and, and, and maybe your diet or, you know, since she's your better half, how does she help you? Um, you know, we kind of got this weird schedule thing going on now where uh, um, I, get, I get the dogs in the morning with the dog walks and she kind of uh, has her own time then. And then uh, later on in the day, I, I've started streaming a lot of video games, uh, trying to, to really uh, ramp that up and stay connected with the community. So that's where I do my own thing and, and, and painting as well, obviously. Um, and then we kind of reconnect later on in the day, um, kind of start organizing what we're going to try to cook. Uh, it, it's it's a bit strange because uh, for us cooking is a big part. Uh, I love to cook and we like to to do that together, uh, and it's kind of like the family time. Uh, but with with us not doing much currently, uh, there's been a, quite a few times where we we don't feel like we need to eat a big meal at night. Uh, we just we just haven't burned enough energy where we're like, yeah, you know, we can just snack something for dinner. So we've really made over the last couple of days, we've made a point of trying to to actually. You know, almost make an activity out of it. And even if we're not so hungry, let's make something. Let's make sure that we're 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 still uh, uh, sharing that that valuable uh, time together. So yeah, that's good. That's it's good. Been, it's, we... it's been it's been an adjustment for sure. Oh, I'll bet. I'll bet. Um, how about as far as you, you bring up the gaming thing? So I'll skip ahead to that. You 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 and the Sounders, some of your teammates, you're pretty big gamers. Fans can pay now a fee to play with you guys online to raise money for COVID relief. How's that been going? Yeah, it's been a good uh, a good learning experience. I mean, uh, you know, been been streaming a little bit here and there before already. Me and Mixer, and I think some of the other guys on Twitch, uh, which are some streaming platforms. But uh, really trying to, to ramp that up. Um, I'm going to be starting to do more. And my Mixer account is Stefan Twenty Four Fry if you want to follow. But uh, kind of my, almost make a daily thing out of it, you know. And uh, not just video games, but also uh, the the plan is for me to start. Uh, streaming some art stuff as well. Uh, well, people can look over my shoulder while I'm painting and doing things like that. But in the meantime, yeah, there's a there's a local company called Shot Call, and they had this really cool software where it allows us to put out uh, dates where we want to play, or where we're offering to play uh, with people, and uh, for a small fee they can sign up, um, and then we kind of coordinate everything and hop on. I'm, I'm doing one later today, uh, a, a, a session on of Apex on uh, on Xbox with two people. But uh, right now, it's just a good, uh, a good, a good way of staying in touch with people, but also raising a little bit of money for our community. We're donating everything to the Ray Foundation that obviously has set up a, um, a fund that, that is going to help our community during this uh, difficult time. Who has the best skills as a gamer on your team? Oh, that's that's like uh, saying who's the best athlete in the world, right? There's so many different different sports. 
Um, I, I actually, uh, so, so a lot of my teammates were playing Fortnite, and I jumped out of Fortnite probably a, a, a half a year or a year ago. And uh, I kid you not, I just jumped in this morning just to kind of check it out again, and I had no idea what was going on. So I'm going to give that one to Christian and Jordan. I think Christian's probably the best when it comes to that. I've been playing a lot of Call of Duty, uh, a little bit of FIFA, uh, a little bit of Apex. Um, a lot of these competitive um, games were essentially it's, it's teams that start out early on and you try to survive and be the last ones left. It's called Battle Royale mode. Uh, it's, it's the hype right now. So uh, we're, we're playing a lot of that, but trying to dabble into FIFA because I know there's a big following there too. And like I said, just uh, just really stay stay connected with the, with the community because uh, this is kind of... Uh, our way of trying to entertain them because we obviously can't be on the pitch currently um, and, and just making sure we stay in contact with everybody. All right, one last question before we get to clean craft and, and some of your art, but you know, what kind of yeah. advice would you give to uh, people at home doing their best to, to balance their work and everyday life, you know, um, especially with these times now? Um, it's difficult. Uh, I think you have to find a good mix where, you know, you're not going to go – uh, too crazy where you're holding yourself up at home and really not doing anything anymore. Um, for us, for example, to really try to balance that out, we do try to, we, we do try to walk our dogs uh, and catch a little bit of fresh air. Um, once in a while, obviously, make a grocery run. Um, and then when you do that, uh, just be smart about it too. You know, uh, I think in my neighborhood uh, with uh, uh, Trader Joe's, they do a really good job of trying to help you with the guidelines of staying away from people, social distancing, even in, in, when you're in line, waiting to pay for your groceries. Uh, but just be smart about it. Be, be, be uh, aware of what's going on yourself, uh, right? Because uh, you can't just always uh, do, do what you're told. You gotta be a little bit proactive yourself. So wash your hands, um, you know, doorknobs and things like that, that uh, of high use, uh, wipe that down as much as you can. And, and be smart because uh, obviously it's a, it's a strange time, but I think we all do have to play our part to make sure we, we help everybody uh, get through this, uh, this, this, uh, this difficult time. Okay, now the fun stuff. Let's Tell me about this clean craft and uh, tell us about the product and, and why you signed on to promote it. Yeah, I mean, uh, so clean craft, I'm sipping on one right now. We have three flavors, uh, cola, lime, and ginger. Clean craft is a hemp infused beverage. Uh, I'm, a one, I'm I think I'm the first uh, a- active athlete to to endorse or to partner with such, such a company. Um, for me, it, it was it was brought to my attention and I kind of looked into it. But I've always been in search of, uh, of of natural things that can help me out. And, and for me, where clean craft and CBD products come into play, uh, it's a non non psychoactive. There's no THC in it. So uh, I'm looking more for uh, for something that just helps me balance myself out and I think the moment where that really comes into play for me is uh, you know athletes in general they, 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 they spend so much time uh, to try to get h- hyped up for games uh, you know taking caffeine and, and other things uh, high sugar uh, uh, drinks to try to really get amped up for games and, and obviously once that adrenaline kicks in with the crowd around you um, you should be good to go but nobody ever talks about the other side of it you know when, when you're done playing at 10 10 p.m. you get home around 11:30, 12 p.m. Uh, or a.m. Sorry, around midnight. It, it's very difficult to come down from that high. Um, and obviously, when you have sometimes two games in a week, uh, it's important for you to get get back into a healing a state of healing for your body as quickly as possible. But uh, I'm not gonna lie. Sometimes I find myself uh, tossing and turning until four or five in the morning because that adrenaline is just still kicking and still going. So uh, uh, what, what something like this does, a uh, hemp-infused uh, beverage with CBD, it really just kind of levels me out and allows me to come down from that high a bit quicker. Um, and, and so I can go to sleep, quality sleep, and, and allow my body to heal and heal itself. Um, I've, I've always been a, a firm believer in trying to go as natural as possible. Uh, we, all, we all know the stories, uh, athletes, you know, um, um, painkillers and other things, are, other pharmaceuticals that are readily available. Um, but I'm trying to explore as many natural things as possible to do it the most natural way. Um, and, and this has been uh, something that's worked for me. When we were partnered, when I was partnering up with, uh, with clean craft, we had, uh, you know, uh, worked on taking pictures and, and kind of started to, to figure out how we were going to announce this partnership. And then obviously this whole, uh, COVID-19 came out and, and it made it a little bit more difficult. Like how do we come out? Um, uh, with our partnership but then we sensed that maybe hey this is an opportunity for us to say uh, this is a local company uh, teaming up with a, a, 
uh, a local sports or athlete, if you will, and we want to help out this community. So, so what we decided was to come out and tell them about this amazing partnership. And at the same time, um, every four pack that you that, that is sold on the website cleancraft.com, that's clean with two e's, um, cleancraft.com. Every four pack, two dollars will go towards the art community. We decided to use the art community because uh, it's the connection to me, obviously, an aspiring artist. Um, and, and also knowing that uh, it's a difficult time also for, for artists in this community with, uh, you know, musicians, DJs, public speakers. Um, they're, they're part of the entertainment uh, industry the same way as I am. Um, and obviously for sports, everything has been shut down. So for them, it's the same thing. You know, it's very difficult to, there's no more gigs right now. Um, there's no concerts happening. So these people need a little bit of help as well. Uh, and that's what we're trying to do. Is it somewhat of a recovery drink? It seems like it's more of a recovery drink, and that's where the benefits are. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I think it's it, it depends. For some people, it's also a, a, it can serve as an alternative to to alcohol. Uh, period. I think um, talking to my brother who lives in Zurich too, he's he's found this or he's seen this more and more that uh, I think the younger crowd, at least when when I was young, you know, when you were going out, you were having a beer, you were going out, you were having an alcoholic beverage. It was no question of kind of deal going to a bar, but it's getting more and more where a younger crowd is getting into that alternate. Uh, they're looking for an alternative, um, a maybe alcohol-free alternative that still allows them to to uh, have a good time, uh, feel like they're uh, you know they're they're, ha they're they're partying or they're they're out there having like I said having a good time, and, and I think maybe something like this, uh, a CBD infused beverage, uh, is a good alternative. Um, it still kind of does. Uh, Play with your receptors like alcohol does, but in in a in a less in a less harmful way. Um, again, for me, it's more the the, the balancing out, the rebalancing out um, thing of it that works. But um, some people also like to to mix these with alcohol, um, just to kind of try to 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 not have so much alcohol in their beverage, and, and they make for good mixers. They make for good alternatives. Period. And uh, for me, it's more of a recovery thing that I like about it. Yeah. Okay, one more question about the drink. Um, you you just brought it up. It it says add a spirit of your choice to amplify its effect. <laughs> so, what would the spirit of your choice be if you? Uh, what would you recommend? Um, well, like I said, there's three flavors. There's uh, there's cola, there's ginger, and there's lime. Uh, I'm a huge when it comes to alcohol. My my go-to is probably whiskey. Um, I'm a big bourbon and Scotch fan. So uh, going to a, a bar, um, I usually go with the Kentucky Mule. So the ginger, the ginger uh, clean craft goes quite well with that. You can uh, make, mix up a nice little uh, Kentucky Mule with that one. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, I'm saving the best for last because uh, I'm really anxious to see your artwork. I know people are. Um, we know this is a real passion for you. So how important has, has art become in your life? Uh, yeah, I've been working on it, uh, trying to kind of utilize that that, ta that time as much as possible. Sometimes it's difficult when the season's going on because as much as uh, art is, is something that balances me out and helps me with the pressures of being a professional athlete, it, it also may take its toll as well. So uh, I have to be aware of that when it's a, a Friday and a Saturday game or a Sunday game. You know, I don't want to... Ex 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 uh, Put too much energy out out there and get too too crazy. So right now I'm I'm kind of utilizing the fact that I don't have to worry about any games on the weekends and and, and rolling uh, full full steam ahead of my art stuff. So uh, as you can see, it's a little blurry I think, but right behind me there's a really big piece that I've been working on for uh, Washington Federal, which is uh, the official bank of the Sounders. Uh, they were redoing their branch, their main branch downtown, and this was supposed to go in there. It was supposed to happen around April. But obviously, with what's going on right now, we'll see when it happens. But uh, it gives me a little bit more time to, to kind of go back over it and, uh, and make some adjustments and such. Um, and then, uh, what else have I been working on? Um, should I give you guys a little sneak peek? Uh, yeah. There's something that we haven't announced yet at all. So I'll, I'll, I'll show you where I'm at right now. Okay, yeah. That's, if you want to give us a tour, of uh, you, you can take it away. Yeah, that's cool. So uh, um, I'm not a portrait person at all. But uh, uh, a way bigger celebrity than, than, than I am has reached out to me and uh, had an amazing um, idea for us to paint portraits of each other in our unique styles. Um, and so I started uh, painting one of him. I'm not going to say who he is. Uh, but 
started to, with some drippings and such, so some very natural things. Just added the, uh, the stencil outline on top of it. Um, I have my own geometric style on top of it, which I'm, I'm going to start incorporating now with some black lines that's going out into that so it's not so disconnected. But uh, yeah, we're going we're gonna to end up um, um, auctioning these off and uh, the proceeds will go to, uh, again, help the community in this, during this difficult time. That's that's literally I was I was working on that five minutes before we got hopped on here. So yeah, that, that's what's <laughs> happening right now. Um, and then uh, just on the digital side, working on on sketching things. I've also been very fortunate that uh, I signed on with a local company called uh, West Coast Goalkeeping. Um, uh, I'm sponsored by them now this year, and uh, they're allowing me to design my own goalkeeper gloves, um, not just uh, aesthetically but also functionally. So uh, I've been kind of working a lot on that. Uh, we've already made one prototype. Um, so it's very, very cool to see how ideas actually feel because it's one thing to design a really nice glove, uh, but then when you get it and then you realize, oh, this membrane is way too thick, that's way too stiff, this is not functional. Um, it's, a, it's, it's a very challenging but very rewarding process. So I've been kind of working with West Coast Goalkeeping um, to work on my own pro model. Um, and again, like I said, trying to use, utilize this extra time that I have at home to, to be as productive as possible. And you're getting a lot of, a lot of stuff done. Show me the gloves again Ed, so we can get a better look at those. Are those that, is that the yeah, one you're so, designing? So, so these, are, these are my pro models that I'm wearing currently. This is, uh, this is the... Um, we have, I have two of them that I've been actually wearing in games even. Um, the Exo Marleys are these. This is a style called Exo Marley, uh, and these are the Pacifica Spiders. Um, the reason why I have these out right now is not just because I'm wearing them, but I like certain parts of both of them. So uh, in my pro model, I'm trying to kind of take some things from one glove and others from from the other one and, and, and mesh them together and truly make it my own. So, uh, but but yeah, sometimes it's very it's very difficult. You put something on, whether it is a glove or whatever, and you're like, oh, I like that. But when if you really have to dig into the fine details, uh, it's hard to to figure out why you really like something or why you don't like it. So, so now this is really something a, a, a deep dive into the, the the most utmost detail of of what makes a glove a good glove or a bad glove. Oh, so what does a glove like that cost? Oh, so West Coast is actually awesome. So I think this glove online on uh, on their website, go to their website and check it out. Uh, I think they range around sixty to eighty dollars, which is quite affordable. Um, I mean, I, even when I was still uh, in high school and college, I think gloves were already kind of pushing one twenty, one thirty a, a pair, which is which is quite expensive. I remember when I still had to buy my own gloves, uh, sometimes with my parents, they'd be like, well, you got two pairs a year and that's it, you better figure it out. So you had to treat those uh, and wash them and take care of them for as long as you could. Um, so this makes it a bit more affordable. You know, you can almost get a two for one and they actually last quite a while. Um, I went through, with one pair, I went through a whole preseason, which is consists of double days and, and pretty pretty hard work. So it's about three, four weeks uh, of double days um, with one pair. So that was that was a bit surprising and, and, and really awesome to see the, the durability and, and, and the quality as well. Man, you're getting into a little bit of everything. You talk about websites and their website, but Stefan24Fry.com is where people can go to check out your artwork, correct? And, and buy it. Yes, correct. Um, yes, I, I started uh, my website last year. Um, Stefan24fry.com, you had it correct. Um, mainly art stuff, uh, and right now there's no orig originals on there for sale, but uh, I still have some reprints. If people want to get those, I think they're still shipping out right now. Um, but like I said, uh, working on other stuff right now that's going to go on here. Also exploring some, um, some merchandise, exploring some apparel possibly. Um, that, that, that may go out as well at some point. But yeah, just, just staying busy. Uh, and exploring things that I like, that, that, that I'm passionate about. Um, and then hopefully soon I can get back to the one, the number one passion in my life, soccer, right? Yeah, no doubt. There's a lot of fans waiting for you to get back to that for sure. Is there, um, are you pretty mobile there? Can you show us around your studio? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, not, it's not a big one, but I can, I can pop this thing off here and I can kind of show you around a little bit. Okay, I'm going to take you through here. So, uh, so like I said, this is the big piece behind me. It's a uh, six foot by six foot. It doesn't want to. Um, maybe if I go out of the way. 
So it's quite it's quite detailed, a lot of geometric shapes and such. Um, it's six foot by six foot. It's quite big, um, and it's supposed to go into the main branch at Wafet at some point. Uh, we'll see when that happens. Um, on this wall right here um, is an underpainting right now, at early stages, um, kind of neon colors, um, which I really. Uh, this is where I got inspired from. All the uh, the graffiti's usually have very poppy colors, um, and so this this one is the same. A blue series uh, underpainting uh, early stages. Um, I showed you the one I'm currently working on, and I like that I, when I show you it actually, it actually uh, picks up his face. I think. Yeah, it does um, really so good. It, yeah, so so it, it gets crisp because it, it recognizes that, that that's a face. So that that means I did something right. right? <laughs> <laughs> um, and that's really it. I mean, my studio is not very big. The one in the back right there, uh, Genesis was the very first one that I painted uh, to completion and so that's why I, I framed it and I hung it up um, just because that was, a, that was a big milestone for me to finally um, figure, all, figure out all the techniques to, to really put, put a piece together because coming from, from the digital world, sorry I'm putting this back into that's place right. here, there you go, coming from the digital world, you know, uh, painting on Illustrator and Photoshop. Uh, it's, it's, it's quite different. Obviously, you can you can always make adjustments. You can hit the undo button. You can um, you know opacity. You can you get opacity and transparency. You can always adjust that. And uh, in my style, where there's a lot of layering going on, um, you need to get those those things right uh, in terms of the viscosity of the paints right away before you even apply them. So uh, that 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 took quite a while to figure all that out before I was able to finally uh, finish one and 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 varnish it and uh, call it a complete project how long does it take you let's let's just say is i don't even know if it's a fair question on average what would it take you when you when you first start a project to the finish ah oh, good question it really varies uh, i have to say with the the one that's behind me that just the sheer size of that was was something else uh because before it's been more like a uh, 60 by by 30 i've been working on and now this was a was a big square, um, 60 by 60, so or 72 by 72. Pardon me. That's just a big size. You literally have to. When it was on the table, I have to run around it before things would dry out um, to make sure that I could uh, keep mixing the paints and such. So after two hours of doing that, you, you your your body's telling you, you know what? I've had a workout. I'm good. I'm good for the day. So uh, I don't know. That one. That one was. A, it's been a good experience. But I would. I would reckon I'm. I'm closing in on. Probably 80 hours, 80 to 100 hours, somewhere like that. Um, but because of that, I've now learned a lot of things to really get a bit more efficient with with, with, with other stuff. So uh, a regular 30 by 60, 30 by 60 piece is probably around 50 hours um, of layering, of, of taking pictures, of then uh, sketching on Illustrator. I usually uh, import uh, the the underpaintings into Illustrator and sketch on top of them. And then I sort of follow that sketch as I'm doing the digital stuff on top of it, the geometric stuff. Where, you know, where do you draw your inspiration from, Stefan? Like, is, is it just something, could it be something as simple as a walk? Could it be something as simple as a song? Like, what is it? Totally. I think, I think art is everywhere, right? Uh, inspiration is everywhere. Uh, sometimes it's, it, it's, it's simply a, um, a color combination that may inspire you. Uh, it can be a, a contrast or it can be a silhouette. Um, I, I find a lot of things um, in architecture. I would have loved to study architecture actually in college. I, I've always been fascinated by, by precision, uh, by, by sharp edges. And uh, maybe that's also the goal, goalkeeper in me, I think. You know, as a goalkeeper, you, there's not much room for error. Things have to be very precise. Uh, thought well thought out and so maybe my style kind of is a is my personality as a goalkeeper coming through on the canvas um, but but yeah you can find inspiration anywhere it, it can be a song that just that just makes you feel a certain way it can be a memory um, I get inspired by the craziest things yeah man well it's clearly working man I was in there selling yeah no I've been very fortunate uh, I mean the, I think I've sold now uh, four or five uh, originals the longest one that was online was for about an hour. Um, so, so they've it's they have, I almost have the, the the other issue. I have the issue that I don't have enough art pieces right now. People keep complaining that I don't have any originals for sale. So I'm sorry. I'm working on it right now and trying to get them out as quickly as I can. But I guess it's a good problem to have. Um, I think as an artist, it's uh, 
I, I, I again, I just sense a similarity to the goalkeeper there. Um, and I think a famous artist once said, um, you know, artists are perfectionists and they're striving for that perfection, but they know they will never, ever achieve it. So, uh, because what is perfection? In the art world, it's all objective or subjective anyways, right? So um, I think it's really nice to see myself evolve as an artist. Um, uh, I, I work on things and then uh, I, I kind of maybe get inspired by a different artist or by something outside or wherever I may find inspiration. And it kind of pushes you down a different route that you had expected. And I, I, I kind of love that. That's, that's super cool, the way you can evolve as an artist and uh, incorporate new things. Um, so that that will that will never ever uh, cease, right? That that's an ever evolving uh, journey as an artist, and I hope that I keep on growing, and I hope that people keep on liking it. That uh, that I can keep doing it, right? Because at some point, um, sports will be done for me. Uh, I hope that's not for a long time. <laughs> but uh, and then yes, I would love to obviously stay connected uh, with that first passion as well, maybe through broadcasting or something like that. Um, but there's a there's a second to, second career to be found, maybe a second passion to be followed, and and right now I'm trying to set myself up for art to be that. Yeah, I think you'd be great in the broadcast booth, that's for sure. Um, yeah, thank you. Yeah, man. The six by six is that the biggest one you've ever done? Yes, it is. Uh, I I kind of worked on a, a mural in my in my office for a little while that would have probably been been twice the twice the width of that, so uh, six high and probably twelve ish to fifteen ish wide even. Um, but uh, it, it was more a, a project of learning techniques with spray paint in particular. Um, a lot of my geometric shapes that you see, uh, I, I tape them off. I tape them off and then I, I layer them on. So, so it's a, a long, tedious process of setting up. It's maybe not so much painting, but it's the setup that takes quite a while. Um, and yes, the bigger the bigger the projects get, the more you have to go climb on ladders and put these tapes on and, and, and bend over and make sure. Uh, like I said, I'm a perfectionist, so I'm, I'm out there with a ruler making sure that the width of the of the of that of that stripe is for uh, is an is a foot down here, but it's also a foot in the middle and it's a foot on the top. So I'm sitting there with the ruler marking everything off. So uh, it, it, it takes a while, but I enjoy it. Uh, it's part of my personality. Again, that that striving for perfection. Um, so I can't complain. Yeah, man, it's really impressive. I just want to ask you one question about playing in the stadium. If MLS begins again, but they won't let crowds in at first, how would that be for you? And how would you react to not playing in front of a, a fans and, and playing in an empty stadium? Uh, it would be sad. Um, it would be a sad thing because uh, one of the things that I would love is is seeing the, the passion on the field that people have because of something you do um, and the joy that you bring to people. So um, the funny thing is during the game, I think I wouldn't notice it that much because once the referee blows the whistle, you kind of try to zone all that out and really focus on the ball. But uh, if it's for me, it's the warm up. It's it's walking out and really soaking in the atmosphere, um, looking at all the people, the boom boom clap when you walk out, um, and, and when there is those little stoppages in in, in the game, you know, uh, if we score a goal, uh, then you can really just you know uh, switch off for a second and relax for 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 a few few precious seconds and, and soak in the atmosphere and that's what I mean I think seeing that passion seeing that that joy in a stadium that's what you live for that's what you play for um, and so that that would be really difficult to not be able to have that but I understand that um, a obviously uh, it, it's a business and we need to make sure that we we help them less in, in whatever way we can in terms of uh, staying alive um, it's very difficult for, for, for businesses like these as well but it has to be done in a safe way, right? It has to be safe for the players, it has to be safe for the coaches, for all the people that are working in stadiums, and then most importantly for all the fans that, that have come to enjoy these events because how can you enjoy an event like this if, if you don't feel safe? Uh, it's, it's, it's kind of counterproductive. So let's make sure it's safe, let's make sure it makes sense for everybody, and then, uh, and then we'll, we'll get back into stadiums. Even if you have to play till like New Year's Eve? <laughs> Uh, you know, it's it's going to be difficult to do that uh, New Year's Eve uh, up in in Toronto or up in in Montreal. Uh, but I think we're all, all pulling together. You know, yeah. we're all pulling together here in Seattle. But uh, for us in the MLS, uh, we're all pulling together there as well because we're all invested. You know, we want to we want to make sure we help the league. Um, 
survive this in, in the best way possible, but uh, but that we can get this entertainment back to the people, uh, and because we know that, especially here, we've been supported so well, and we are a huge, a huge part of the community. Um, so we want to be, be able to give back to the community and provide that entertainment again, obviously, once it's safe. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Steph. Thank you, Paul. Well, much appreciated. Okay, man. Take care of yourself. All right. All Stay right, safe. See Take care.